So, the oldest dinosaur 243 million years ago was called the Nasasaurus. Who knew? So, the largest meat eating dinosaur, 46 foot long, with a great big six foot sail on its back and spiky little teeth for catching fish. A Spinosaurus. Who knew? So, here in the UK, geography for five year olds. This is on the national curriculum. Nigeria. Africa is the second biggest continent in the world, it says, and then it goes on to say, Nigeria is four times the size of the UK and lots of young people and children live there. Nigeria has some amazing places, it talks about the rainforests, the river deltas, and it says, and I quote, it's full of crabs, fish, hippos and butterflies. Nigeria. Who knew? So, the tallest building in the world is in Dubai, 828 metres tall, called, I believe, the Burj Khalifa. Have I said that right? Who knew? The smallest country in the world is located in Europe. Vatican City. Who knew? You've got your frog's life cycle. So you've got your frog spawn, haven't you? All your eggs and then they um, hatch as it were and you've got your tadpoles and then the legs develop and then you've got this hybrid thing that might be a green frog but with a bit of a tadpole tail going on and that is called a froglet. Then it becomes a young frog and an adult frog. But at that stage in the cycle, the creature is called a froglet. Hello. Most mothers fall into this group in that they are mothers that nourish their babies within their womb. They are called placentals. Salamanders may regrow tails through injury, but they go one stage further and they regrow lost limbs. They can produce perfect new feet and toes in the process. Animal that regrows limbs. Who knew? So, skinks, a type of lizard, has green blood. It also has a green heart, bones, and tongue, too. Who so, knew? Some salamanders have no lungs and breathe entirely through their skin. Who knew? So all mammals have hair, lungs, they're warm-blooded, they can live on land or in water. Most mammals give birth to live babies, but some mammals can lay eggs. Who so, knew? Science here in the UK on the national curriculum Five-year-olds are learning about mini-beasts. What is a mini-beast? Essentially, it's a creepy crawly. Animals that don't have backbones, that are invertebrates, millipedes, centipedes. Also, another key word that five-year-olds are learning at the moment is exoskeleton. So, ants, spiders, and wood lice have a thin 
hard layer and that's called an exoskeleton. You'll find a mini beast in the garden, park, or even at a beach. Mini beasts, exoskeletons. Who knew? So, King Henry VIII, a national curriculum history for five year olds. So, King Henry VIII had six wives, it says, and I quote, most of his wives were not treated well. He even had two of them beheaded. Implies he doesn't like women very much. But I remember learning at secondary school that it was that he desperately wanted his heir. But anyway, but I digress. He wanted to look rich and strong, so he cared about what he looked like. He was quite vain, it is implied. He had jewels sewn into his clothes and ate the finest foods implying that he was a bit like Elton John. However, I seem to recall Henry VIII was quite overweight and asexual, if anything. Um, he also set up the Church of England, it goes on to say. So we've learned three things. He didn't like women very much. It's implied that he liked to look a bit outrageous. And he also set up then goes on to say Henry VIII wasn't the nicest of people. He liked to show off. It then goes on to describe that his best friend was actually a fool, a court jester who used to make him laugh and tell funny jokes and he enjoyed the company of said individual. It then goes on to say that he really enjoyed um, playing with other men, bowling in the bowling alley bending over and throwing the balls down an alley and he also enjoyed playing tennis with other men. The wording is such, although I seem to recall in secondary school the, he shut down all the monasteries and got rid of all the monks and wasn't really into the brotherhood as such. He was LGBTQ+. Happy the 8th. Who knew? So, baked beans are actually haricot beans. And in America, they're called navy beans. Because they were popular with sailors. Who knew? Boudicca led her army against the Romans, but her name comes from the word Buda, B-O-U-D-A, and this means victory. Who knew? So there is a giant star, 32 times larger than the sun, and shines 8 million times brighter, called RMC 136A1. Who knew? So, the Delta Heavy 4 was launched into space in 2018 and the Parker Solar Probe will then make its way towards the sun, into the sun's atmosphere, making its closest approach in 2025. Who knew? So there are 118 elements at the moment in the periodic table, 92 of those found in nature, the rest created in laboratories. If you combine two or more elements together, that creates what we call a compound, for instance, sodium and chlorine. Sodium chloride creates salt. Sodium and chlorine, salt. Who knew? The human head has 
22 bones, eight of them fused together to protect your brain and the rest are used to create the frame of your face. Who knew? So, UK National Curriculum Computing for Five-Year-Olds. Programming Floor Robots, the National Curriculum. Robots are machines. There are lots of types of robots. They move in different ways and do all sorts of different jobs. Because a robot is a machine, we have to program it to do things. It only does what we tell it to do. Floor robots following paths on a grid. Who knew? So, UK National Curriculum Computing for Five Year Olds. What is a computer bug? The, the analogy that is used is if you've got a character and um, it's meant to be moving forward on the controls and instead it's moving sideways or backwards, you then need to look at the algorithm and the code and then fix it. So five-year-olds are being encouraged to fix computer bugs. So bugs can be seen as a problem, it goes on to say, and I quote, if you made a game for someone and it had bugs, it would be a problem for the person using it. This is why fixing bugs is so important. But you can also see it as a challenge. They are part of the fun of coding. You just need to find them and fix them. It's all part of learning to be a coder. Fixing computer bugs. Who knew? So, schools are teaching children about coding. When you learn a code, you can make lots of things happen on your computer. Apparently it's a series of numbers and letters and you can make anything happen, whether that be create a computer game, create a picture, create a film. It's a set of rules and instructions, basically. And if you put them in the right order, you can program lots of things to happen on your computer. Can I just ask, how many people over the age of 30 are familiar with the word coding? Five-year-olds are learning about it. But do we know about it? Coding, who knew? Who knew?